Hello, this is going to be a quick video on my step one experience. Uh, first, I want to start off by saying that although step one will transition to pass fail, I believe that this exam and the concepts that go along with it are vital to the success of step two, uh, which is thought to, to take over the role of step one in the near future. So with that, I want to begin with uh, the resources I used. First up being Pathoma. Uh, Pathoma is great in that it comprises a lot of the high yield pathology topics that will be seen on the exam and that compri uh, comprise majority of, of the topics seen on step one. He also makes it very easy to understand and, and relates uh, and uh, refers to the booklet that comes uh, with the subscription. So I would uh, follow along his presentations and take notes in the book and highlights so I can refer to them uh, later on. Um, next up, Sketchy Medical. Unfortunately, step one does have some high memorization topics such as pharmacology, microbiology, uh, and recently Sketchy also added the biochemistry. I found these sketches very useful to in order to organize uh, all of this information and make, make it easy to retrieve uh, once I was applying the information to questions, uh, question banks, and of course the, the exam. So next up, uh, first aid, I'm sure you're familiar with, with the book, but th the way I used it, uh, the beginning uh, chapters, the basic science, the immunology, the biochemistry, the pharmacology, I made sure I was very familiar with those uh, before starting the organ systems. And I also supplemented the, the first aid uh, book with the USMLE RX platform, the video series that goes along with the book in order to have a, a solid understanding of all the basic sciences before moving forward. And at the end of my studying, I also went back to first aid, uh, kind of uh, skimmed through it in order to see if there was any uh, gaps in my knowledge or any subjects that I, I missed uh, while doing you know, the question banks and the rest of my resources. Next up, Constanzo Physiology. I believe that physiology is a very important topic to have a good grasp on, as a lot of the questions are physiology based, uh, and even if the final question is a pathology question, uh, most of the time the two, three step process it requires to get to the final answer is a physiology related theme or topic uh, that needs to be um, that needs to be put uh, put together. Uh, so I, I believe that Constanzo uh, makes those connections for you and makes it very easy to grasp a lot of the difficult concepts that come with physiology. Um, and the booklet also comes with a online quiz platform, uh, which you can do um, after finishing a, a chapter, let's say. Uh, and I found that also to be very useful to see kind of where I was at and if I understood the, what I just read. Now, next up, uh, biostatistics. For me, it was a little bit of a challenging topic, especially some of the concepts uh, that are required for step one. And coming across Randy Neal on YouTube uh, made it uh, very easy to, to understand and, and enjoyable to watch. He makes a lot of very difficult concepts uh, easy to understand. And uh, I highly recommend uh, that you go and check out his channel. Next up, Golion Podcast. Uh, you can find it free on Spotify. It's a relatively long podcast with the theme of pathology. However, he also gets into a lot of the pharmacology, physiology, and also how to answer the question and what the exam makers are, are looking for uh, when asking about certain subjects. Um, I found it very useful. Sometimes I would listen in the car when I had free, uh, some spare time, maybe at the gym, um, just put my headphones in and continued where I left off. So next up are the question banks. I believe that questions are very important in applying a lot of uh, concepts and uh, sort of simulating how the exam will be and seeing some uh, areas of weakness that uh, maybe you can improve on. Um, I chose three question banks, USMLE RX, Kaplan and UWorld. I first began with USMLE RX on random and untimed uh, at the very beginning of my studying, even before I started uh, studying the basic science portion from first date, uh, just to see how the questions are gonna be asked, uh, the type of topics that, uh, that I will see during my studying and see how I can get from the question to the answer and how I can more efficiently study moving forward. And I kept this question bank open. I was doing 10, maybe 20 questions a day uh, until I got to the organ systems. Uh, once I got to the organ systems, I also opened up Kaplan question bank. And so I had both running at the same time. The reason I did this was because the Kaplan questions, I was doing organ specific. So for example, uh, let's say one day I was doing cardiology uh, at the end of the day, I would do 20 cardiology questions from Kaplan. 
and then I would also do 20 from USMLE RX on random. So this way I also had the, the space repetition from the USMLE RX as I was moving forward with the organ systems. So at the end of my uh, studying my first pass through the organ systems and also finishing USMLE RX and Kaplan, I began uh, UWorld, which is definitely the most important um, question bank that, uh, that you can take. It has around 3,500 questions now, uh, and I knew I wanted from the beginning to only do one pass of it, uh, which is why I did the other two question banks beforehand. Um, so once I uh, began uh, UWorld, uh, I did it on all of them on random and timed, which I recommend to simulate exactly how the exam would be. At the very beginning, I was doing 40 questions a day at the beginning of the day, so that would take me an hour. Uh, and then I would spend the rest of the day, maybe six, seven hours, uh, to review that question block. Uh, so I would go back and uh, I would do each question separately. Uh, I would read the explanation that UWorld gave me. Uh, and I, if I felt that it, that was enough, I would move on. However, if I didn't or if I got that question wrong, uh, I would definitely go back to my resources, uh, maybe watch a Pathoma video or go back to a sketch uh, from Sketch Medical to solidify that information. And I would always ask myself the question uh, after finishing uh, reviewing a certain question, you know, if I get this question again, uh, do, will I get it the correct or a variation of that question? And if the answer was yes, I would move on. Nearing the end of UWorld, once I had uh, around 1,000 or 800 questions uh, left, this was around two months before my exam, I started taking self-assessments. Uh, as you can see here, I took uh, all of the NBMEs that were available to me, 25 to 30, and also the UWorld self-assessments as well. I highly recommend that you take as many self-assessments as you can, as it uh, really puts you in the position of of sitting down and, and taking uh, doing questions for for five, six hours, which really builds up your stamina for test day. Another thing I wanted to mention was the free 120. Uh, I did it two days before at the Prometric Test Center, and I highly recommend uh, you do this as well if you have the opportunity. It really helps uh, you eliminate a little bit of the anxiety from test day and get you familiar with the Prometric Test Center and sort of the, the procedures that you do before uh, writing the exam and, and how to take breaks as well, which is very important. Thank you for watching.